This story begins 60 million years ago. Perhaps the last dinosaurs were still roaming the planet, and the first owls had already appeared. Life in the ancient world wasn't easy. Huge lizards everywhere. Then the meteorite. Extinction. Famine. But owls adapted to everything and began to live happily. And it went on for quite a long time, until 36 million years ago, when they appeared. As I said, the peaceful life of owls came to an end with the appearance of eagles. That's how the laws of nature work. Almost any animal must have a competitor. This doesn't apply to orcas, of course, but... Oh well. Our planet is full of animals that don't get along, but owls and eagles have become perfect opponents. They fight each other during the day and night, share resources, evolve, kill each other, sometimes eat each other, sometimes do it just to win, destroy chicks, destroy nests, and they may even die together in a fight to the death. This has been going on for 36 million years, and the simple fight between the two predators eventually escalated into a real war. It seems that at some point, nature just decided that owls are bored with life too easy. Why not increase the challenges and add huge competitors? Great, the eagles fit right in. Now bring on the popcorn. Yes, owls really do hate eagles. So much, it's best not to leave them alone in an enclosed space, like an aviary at a zoo. At best, the birds will fight. At worst, well, one day, the zoo decided to keep bald eagles and great horned owls together. And one morning, the zookeepers found leftovers of the eagles and very satisfied owls. Yep, they don't get along at all. Yeah, it's hardcore. So when the biologist decided to revive the falcon population, which are only related to eagles, in the eastern United States, including Maine, the first step they took was to survey the area. They searched for great horned owls to make sure these aggressive guys weren't around. What are you looking at? Otherwise, the owls would have just killed all the falcons, snatching the poor things even from their nests or from the edges of the cliffs, and no one would be able to stop them. <laughs> wait, wait. Now that we're talking about war, it would be nice to look at the characteristics of the warring sides. The owls have the ability to move completely silently and the ability to see in the dark. But eagles have claws so powerful that they can crush their prey without distracting themselves from their flight. Owls travel at about 50 miles per hour. Some eagles speed up to 200. Owls probably have better maneuverability, but they don't make long flights. Eagles have amazing eyesight. Owls can turn their heads 270 degrees to monitor the situation. But if we forget all that and focus only on size, the largest eagle, the stellar sea eagle, can reach 41 inches in length. At the same time, the largest representative of owls, the Blackiston's fish owl, only grows to 27 inches. More often than not, this is how it works in nature. If no one has venom, whoever's bigger is stronger. The end. A bald eagle and a great horned owl immersed in a deadly clash. Talons and a razor-sharp beak quickly put the eagle on top, tearing away at the flesh of the now defenseless owl. But it's more complicated than that, of course. Obviously, owls didn't just take offense to eagles for growing bigger. There's more to it. Take the menu, for example. Owls usually eat various small rodents, sometimes hares or squirrels. Smaller species eat mostly large insects, and some eat fish and frogs. In short, I wouldn't call owls such gourmands. They aren't koalas, but still their diet is more or less understandable. But eagles? Well, eagles eat everything. Everything, really, from fish and rodents to cows, sheep, parrots, and even turtles. They share the same niche with owls. The latter hardly like it. Look, so maybe that's why owls became nocturnal predators. Many rodents are active at night, but eagles, on the contrary, are asleep, and owls can safely hunt whatever they want to eat without fear of competition. Perhaps because they had to share their niche with other mega-voracious feathered raptors, owls simply didn't have enough food, so they quickly evolved and lost size at the same time. Some scientists believe that owls, like many other animals, were much larger in ancient times than they are today. The climate was different, the air was clean, gophers didn't have any GMOs, but it seems that since the appearance of eagles, owls have seriously diminished. Maybe the night mode didn't do them any good after all, and they couldn't find anything really nutritious. In fact, not every creature faced with competition would have found a way out. Many animals and birds, which today can be found only in history and biology textbooks, failed to cope with nature's challenge. Once the amount of food was reduced, they were like... <laughs>
But owls are amazingly resilient birds. As soon as something around them changed, they found a way to adapt to it, remaining cool raptors. And there was another option, to become omnivores and gradually switch to a plant-based diet, like cows. And yes, some researchers believe that these fascinating creatures were predators in the distant past, but something didn't work out for them. There's even a theory that owls have changed their daily routine several times over millions of years. Ornithologist Mark Devicatus believes that owls are like birds that adapted to nocturnal conditions, but then made forays during the daytime at various moments in history. It's very difficult to figure out exactly what happened to owls during evolution, unlike it was with mammals and some dinosaurs. The the avian skeleton is too thin and therefore rarely found as a fossil. We have to limit ourselves to theories. Still, scientists occasionally come across a fossil scoop. In 1990, the remains of an owl that lived 55 million years ago were found in Wyoming. Unlike all modern owls, this one had simply deadly claws, so long and sharp that it could apparently easily pierce its prey through. You know, just like an eagle. And as you can see, those are very huge talons. Mm -hmm. Um, those talons could cause serious damage. Modern owls prefer to use their beaks, but their great-great-grandparents seem to have been somewhat similar to their bitter enemies. I wonder why owls had to give up such long claws. What, did eagles patent them? <laughs> eagles can be called the younger brothers of owls. What? If you look at their, shall we say, genealogical tree, it becomes clear that they are, in a sense, descended from a common ancestor. Perhaps we could even conventionally call them cousins. Now take your pick of who of them is Dudley Dursley. Wake up, cousin! We're going to the zoo! Are you familiar with the situation when some not-so-close friend comes to visit without asking? Get up. What? Near my seat. How is this your seat? Eats all your food, falls asleep despite attempts to escort them out, and ends up breaking something as well? Eagles are constantly in that situation because owls steal their nests. Hello. Sometimes bald eagles build nests just to practice, well, and to provide themselves with real estate in advance. But more often than not, this real estate goes to owls. They don't make their own nests, so they feel perfectly comfortable in the nests of others. And it doesn't matter if there are eggs or chicks in this nest. For an owl, they're something like a light breakfast. No wonder eagles don't like such guests. And so it goes for tens, hundreds, thousands, thousands, millions of years. Despite evolution, cataclysms, climate change, and human activity, but if owls had a higher IQ and were able to count, they would have realized long ago that they had a numerical advantage. Usually, eagles hatch one or two chicks each, but only one survives. At the same time, owls can have up to three or four chicks. Sometimes their number reaches 10. Now, look at the area they live in. Yep, owls are literally everywhere. Eagles are much more choosy and settle mostly in mountainous regions, so you could say that owls have already taken over the world, they just don't know it. But I haven't yet told you about the third participant in these bird wars. While the owls and eagles were fighting against each other, they had a new cousin. Let's say a second cousin, a crow. Unlike their older cousins, whose relationship is like a multi-year war, crows behave with owls about the same way hyenas do with lions. They are natural enemies on a genetic level. Though they don't usually cross paths. But if that does happen, crows will peck, annoy, and follow the owl, sometimes to death. A sleeping owl discovered during the day can be killed by a flock of angry crows. And owls that find crows at night will do the same. Oh, the crow's still alive, dude. Eagles are a different story. Crows often chase eagles in whole flocks, like hungry mosquitoes. But really, they have no idea what they'll do if they get a face-to-face. -face. You know, like a dog that runs after a car but has no idea what'll happen if he catches up with it? Still, the confrontation between eagles and owls is much more ancient and in some ways even noble. For millions of years, they've never been able to leave each other alone even when they started to hunt at different times of the day. But perhaps very soon, this war will become irrelevant. If by the end of the 21st century, average annual temperatures rise by 39 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it could lead to a catastrophe on the planetary scale. But even smaller changes could be fatal for birds. 
Already today, their populations are declining rapidly. According to the study, North America lost about 3 billion birds from 1970 to 2017 and is at risk of losing another 389 species in the near future. Smaller species like blackbirds and sparrows are most often affected by climate change, but problems for some species will cause problems for others. The possibility of a gradual extinction of eagles could be extremely high. And owls? Yeah, I don't think they'll care. Owls will just evolve once again. <laughs> See you later.